Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saber. I'm Brandon, back with Jesse, episode 34. 34. I've lost track. 34. I have it on a piece of paper in front of me. I'm, awesome. glad, I'm, I'm so glad you put that there. Yep. I episode 34. Know. Today's episode is going to be about, it's not their problem, it's yours. Why are you smiling so big right now? Because it's not their problem, it's yours. <laughs> it's mine? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be a good episode, I think. Uh, you know, last week we had a really good episode. We talked about, you know, accessories that you should consider and not consider. Yeah. And we had a lot of good feedback. Customers calling all week long saying, like, that helped him out, helped him kind of guide him in the right direction. I, I went back and listened to that. It was a really good episode. I, I know you guys that. listened to it when you went to Duluth, right? I, we did, yeah, yeah. I put it out in the car for Brianna to hear. Uh-oh. And it got to that part where I talked about, you know, trying to select a wife and have those choices. <laughs> that was an interesting yep. car ride. <laughs> did she know that I'm scared of her now? Because I said I was scared of her. In that she episode. knows we're both scared of her, yep. dude. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, um, not, a, not a good thing to play when you're stuck in the car with somebody that mean for two, two and a half hours, you know? <laughs> that mean. She's the nicest lady ever. Um, yeah, but she can be violent. Uh, oh, Is there a duck loose? Gingy just jumped in there. <laughs> Physically executed Chewbacca sounds. I thought Chewbacca walked in the room. Um, hey, how you doing over there, Garrett? I'm doing good. Not as good as Jesse, though. It's his birthday today. Oh, you didn't have to bring, we birthday, bring that up. Yeah, oh, we were going to bring that up. We definitely were going to bring that up. Happy birthday there. Hey, thanks, guys. 52? So, 35. Oh, 96. 35. Too bad we weren't on episode 35. I'd have played out. So close. So close. Should have started the week earlier. You could be 34 for one more day. That'll be all right. Oh, we should have started. This is on you, Garrett. Should have started the week earlier. We could have been at 35 today. Dang it. This is all on you. How was you guys' Thanksgiving? Really good. I ate a lot of pie. Did you? Yes. Uh, Gary, how was yours? Very good. Very good. I watched the Gophers beat Wisconsin Badgers, and that was amazing. Yeah, I got a picture from him when he was rushing the field with his one good leg. That was fun. You know what I'm thinking to myself the whole time? I get this picture, right? And it's him rushing the field. It's all the fans rushing the field because we beat the Badgers. And Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yay, go sports. Um, but anyways, I'm at this banquet. You know, I had a banquet this last week, and so I was at this banquet. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about that anyways, a little bit. Anyways, back to my story. Um, <laughs> so I got excited. Sorry. Yeah, I see that. He rushed the field. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, I pay your medical bill. Don't you get back up in the stands. Get up in the stands. You get back up in the stands. We're paying those medical bills now. Like, you stay up there, Mr. One Leg. We need you. Yeah, I need you. I can't have you out again. No, it was terrible. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, no, that was the, uh, the inner dad me coming up. Like, no, don't go down there and enjoy yourself. But then you still responded with nice. Yeah, I still had to be Which nice. is weird because you're wearing the boot again. Yeah, two different things, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He hurt himself again. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, too. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, so Garrett hurt himself again. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks, Garrett. Um, Jesse's birthday today. Yeah. So happy birthday, Jesse. Thanks, bud. I'd sing to you, but I'm terrible. So I'm not going to sing to you. Yeah, please don't sing. <laughs> I think you oh. have the voice of an angel. <laughs> a mixture between Fergie sounds and like, Jesus. Yeah, it sounds like Fergie and Jesus. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, so today, let's talk a little bit about today's episode. Uh, it's not their problem. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. I am dead tired today. That is not my problem. No. Nope. That's yours. <laughs> no, it's still your problem. <laughs> yep, it's yours. It's not my problem. Um, yeah, it, the, really, it's a mindset thing here. You know, right. I'm just going to ask a question, and you guys jump in, you know, as you feel necessary. But do you get the feeling that this time of year that nobody's happy? It's it seems like it. Does it not? No. I mean, you go out in public and people are rude, like everywhere. People are cold. Yeah, like I just feel like people really don't like. People like this time of year, but like they don't like this time of year. Right. And it's not that like they don't like the time of year. It's like you get so busy in the hustle and bustle and all the stuff. And I figure life's a gift and I don't intend on wasting it. You know, really, when you think about it, like you got the end of the year push for work, right? Yeah. A lot of companies are busy at the end of the year trying Very. to get as much done as they can before the deadline. You have that rush. You have the holidays, which like this time of year, the holidays are like never ending, you know? Yeah, who packs two major holidays this close together? Come yeah, on. Yeah, and they're not like one day holidays. Right. You know, because you have... Thanksgiving, which for a lot of people ends up a weekend deal, you know, because exactly. you end up having Thanksgiving and then, you know, whatever they do on Black Friday and then you have the weekend. And, it, you know, it's just it kind of becomes, you know, elongated weekend there. And then you have Christmas and Christmas again is, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And then it's like you, a 30 day celebration. And then you run into and then you run into New Year's right? like a week later. You know, it's like you have no time to catch your breath. Right. No. So you have all that going on. Plus, let's be honest, you have in-laws for like two months straight. Right. Don't you have in-laws living with you right now? 
you, we, you really had to bring this up yeah, on my birthday. Like, yeah. happy birthday to me. You happy live with birthday, your in right now. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're with me. Yeah, yep. they're staying here. They're here up from Maybe that's why everybody's crabby. They're hanging out with their in-laws. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm fortunate. My in-laws are awesome. Hey, you know what the difference is between an in-law and an outlaw? Go on. <laughs> outlaws are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, I appreciate that one. I was a little nervous to say go on. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Anyways, the uh, but yeah, a lot of people do struggle around the holidays as well. You know, you think about that work-life balance. You yeah. talk about, you know, there's a lot of financial strain on a lot of people during this time of year because, again, the gift feeling, like people feel like they got to spend beyond their means. like that. In Everybody itself. needs a gift. Yeah, like you don't have to do that first off. Right. Um, buy what you can afford. And if you can't afford anything, don't buy anything. A hug will do. Yeah. Be present. Right. Right? Um, but, you know, some of the comments you hear from people are, they just catch you off guard this time of year. And For sure. I get that feeling that people just like naturally are unhappy and it's, it's a mindset, you know? I agree with you. It's 100% a mindset. And, you know, I don't get why we get so caught up in everything that we give ourselves these unrealistic deadlines, you know? Right. You know, so many people are so busy, they lose their personality this time of year. They do. You know, realistically, when you're looking at different things you know in your life like it's all an attitude like you're here you go i'm gonna put it out there like your job doesn't suck like your job doesn't suck mondays don't suck the weather doesn't suck you know your partner doesn't suck like it realistically your negative mindset sucks that's what sucks i love it like get rid of that mindset like lack of self-worth and self-love sucks like that's what you need to do is you got to get back to like it's not their problem it's yours Right. Like you're busy, right? I really like what you just said there. That was that was really nice. I like that. You know, and it's one of those things where you got to think about it. Like it's in business. Like okay, you're a business owner. You're an employee of a business, right? And everybody's like self-important, right? Right. Like I'm more important than that guy, so my feelings are more important. Like no, it's Roll not. Revolves around me. Yeah, like everybody gets in that mindset, and it's not their intention, maybe, but you have to really take a step back. You know, being busy is stressful, right? It is. It's stressful for everybody, though. Right. It's stressful for the boss because. Trust me, the boss doesn't feel good about having his employees work really, really hard, right? You feel bad? <clears throat> I always feel bad when you guys are working crazy <laughs> I'm, hours. I'm kidding. You like, know that. <laughs> but, like, the reality is, like, the employees feel bad because right. they can't get caught up. You know, they think the boss is upset. The boss thinks they're upset. Like, it's, it's a vicious cycle. If we all just work together, like, I'm fortunate enough I work with some of the best people in the industry. I'll agree with that. Like, our, our place here is awesome. I mean, we have 90-something employees that are just phenomenal, right? That's very true. And every single person carries their own weight and is willing to help each other out. Uh, absolutely. And we all have stressful days. We all have bad days. But we all rally around each other, right? Right. Even our bad days are fun, though. Yeah. Like, like we make just, our bad days fun. Garrett, agreed? Yeah. I mean, you even said it. Like, when you were out with your leg issue, leg issue 1.0, um, <laughs> But you said it, like you missed being around the office. Yeah, of course. Like a lot of people take that for granted, you know, like right. being able to come to the office every day, like, right? Yeah. Then suddenly he couldn't come because he couldn't get to work. And, you know, we're like, you know, work from home. You're good. Like nobody here was upset about it. But then like days later, we're like, okay, Garrett needs to come back. We miss him. Like, yeah. Oh, for sure. Where's the energy? For sure. I was drawing little Garrett's on paper, putting them up around the office. Like, <laughs> gosh, I wish he was here. Oh man. Little Garrett's, huh? That sounds Garrett's, a little obsessive. Uh, that's kind of creepy. Oh, I think I text you almost every day, didn't I? Yeah. It's weird. They looked like poop emojis when he was drawing them. <laughs> he kind of did. He kind of did. Um, you, do you think you think you notice it more like this year, maybe last year, people were a little more crabby, maybe a little more strung out? I do. I think this year's been a little worse. Um, I, agree. I think because the world's a lot busier this year, if you want my honest opinion. Right. But I was also thinking, you know, you got a lot of people working at home. Yeah. They're not in the office anymore. They're out of that situation yeah. right, where they're not around people. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing is, you know, people get so busy, they become overwhelmed, right. really. And when you're overwhelmed, people handle stress differently. Yeah. And sometimes you have to take a look at that. You know, like each person's fighting their own battle. Like whatever that battle is, is individual. So as you get into this time of year, like you have to start thinking about that. Like you being busy isn't your customer's problem. Right? Yeah, very true. Like your customer's trying to spend their money with you. They are. You got to cater to them. You got to take care of and them. And flip that around though. As a customer... Them being busy, okay, or you needing something done today, it's, it's not their problem either. You know, right. like, they got work they're doing for other people, too, so, like, you have to accommodate them, too. Like, I get it. You're trying to spend your money, but you have to understand that they only have so many resources, too, so you guys have to give and take. Right. It's okay. got to be a relationship. You got to yeah. work together. Let's just put it out there. Like, you get back the same energy you put out, right? Very true. Is that not true? Very true. Like, if you're short and rude with people, people tend to be the same to you. Absolutely. Like I, I can firsthand say, like if if you smile a lot and you're polite with people, they tend to want to work with you more. That's absolutely true. I, I go out of my way when I go to the you know 
the supermarket or I go to, you know, the, the mall or whatever, you know, at this time of year specifically, like I try to say thank you to every person that is there and you just, you know, appreciate every person that is willing to help me out. Right. Because they have their own stuff they're dealing with. And sometimes just being able to tell somebody thank you or that you appreciate them goes a long way. And I wish I had 10 more like you. It does. Absolutely. I try to engage with anyone that helps yeah, me, right? Absolutely. I, even if it's just something goofy, just something to interact yep. and make that day, that person's day. Well, you know, time's only time, right? I've said this many times to you guys. Like, you and I have had this conversation, Jesse, oh, you yeah. know, in private. That absolutely. Time is only time. Yep. And nobody's telling you that you can only work eight to five. The yeah. only person telling you that is yourself. Right. Right? Right. Like, there's 24 hours in a day. We joke about it all the time that I say, like, God gives me 24 hours and I tend to use them all. But it's not a joke for me. Like, I use them because it makes my life less stressful. Right. Some days I use 18 hours of that 24 hours to work. Yeah. But there's days I don't use 18 hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, I use what I need in that day. Right. I take advantage of it and it allows me to be less stressful. You know? Like, it, it really, it's, you know, it's okay to come in and do some extra work to get caught up. Like, right. sometimes I come in early and I do things, you know to get myself ahead so I'm not stressed out. Absolutely. I try to plan for that. Like I try to figure out, okay, Mondays are busy. I'm going to come in early on a Monday and try to get caught up so I'm not completely regretting, you know, Just that extra. Yeah. Well, the thing is you, you get an extra hour of sleep, right? People right. think like sleep, sleep, sleep. Like sleep doesn't really make you money. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't accomplish anything. You know, yeah, okay, you're rested, right? Right. But you sleep and then you get up and then you're overwhelmed and now it didn't matter, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, I can give you an example. Last night I worked till almost 2 o'clock in the morning, right? I was up late, pounding out emails. Monday was busy, but I stayed up and got myself ready for today. Right? Less stress when I woke up. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little tired today, but I accomplished a lot. Yep. And no. I used every hour of my yep. time that and, I needed. And it's not forever. That's what I tell everybody. Right. It's not forever. Take it while you can. Exactly. You know, because, you know, my, my favorite quote, you know, and I'm going to say it out there. This is one of my favorite quotes. If you don't want to have to look at the price tags, then you have to work without looking at the time clock. It's very true. Like you will be more successful and more profitable if you're willing to put in the time and the, the, the labor and the work. See, I look at things as a season. This is kind of the way I've always looked at it is anyone can do anything for a short period of time, yep. right? It's a season. Yep. Seasons are short. They come, they go. Yep. It's a, it's a season in your life. Yep. You know, get through it, on to the next one, right? Yep. You're busy, that's good. Yeah. Like be grateful for that. Now do something about it though. Like it's a season, like you said. So be prepared for that season, right? Right. Or if it's not a season, you're like, it's been all year. Then you need to do something. Something needs to change. Correct. If like, it's been that long. People panic. Like, that's my favorite thing to watch people do. Like, they panic. When they don't have work, they're like, complaining, right? Oh, my God, there's no work. I need to get something going, blah, blah, And then they get the work, and they complain about the work. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> right. You wanted the work. Now you have the work. Now you're complaining about the work. Just do I, the work. I don't say a damn thing when we have a slow day around here. I just, no. yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Like, you, you. You take it in stride, right? You do. Slow days, you know the next day is not going to probably be slow. Right. Like, you take it in hammered. stride. Use slow days to your advantage to get ahead so you have busy days. Right. And then when you have busy days... Be grateful you have a busy day and just get the work done. <laughs> don't complain to about the work. Slow day, yeah. right? Like don't don't complain about the work. Yep. You know, and then you know one thing you need to remember is like your customers don't care. They don't want an excuse. They want you to give them a solution. Yes, they do. They came to you for something. You know, in our case, they come to us for CNC machines, right? Right. We don't ever tell somebody we're not going to build them a machine. They want a solution. We're going to build it. Right. We give them our solution. Right. They don't want you to come up with an excuse. Well, we can't build you a machine. Right. Like, nope, nope, I'm going to build it. You just need to understand, okay, here's my timeline, right? I'm, right. I'm straight up honest with you, you know? They came to me with their problem. I'm going to try to come up with a solution. I'm going to solve it, right? Now, whether I have to add equipment, right? Mm -hmm. I add equipment. When we get so busy that we can't keep up, we add equipment. We do. Like, we add people. Like, in your case, listeners, like, add a CNC machine, right? Add a CNC router. Add a CNC plasma machine. Start getting ahead, Right? You have to start thinking about that. Start like, preparing for the next season that's coming. Correct. You know, and you have to talk about that. You know, like adding equipment reduces the burden later on. You know, a lot of people, they think adding equipment solves their problem immediately. No. I'm going to tell you no right now. No, this stuff has to work. If you're trying through. to add a piece of equipment today to solve your problem today, you're behind. You're, yes, you You've are. You've already failed. For sure. You've already failed because you're thinking too far behind. You're adding equipment today because you made a mistake already and you know you're behind, so you're going to fix yourself for the future. That's, That's why all. you're adding equipment. Absolutely. You know, when you Nailed come it. running into the door, right, and you tell a guy, we're so busy, I need a machine tomorrow. That, that's on you, man. Like, I can't build you a machine in one day. Right. Like, I get it, but lack of planning on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on my part, right? Right. Same thing for your customers. Your right. customer comes to you and says, I need my cabinets tomorrow. I have a schedule. Right. I will get it to you as fast as I can, but 
that's where you as an owner, a business owner or an employee need to think ahead. How can I be prepared for those types of situations? Well, if I own more of the process, I might be able to offer more rush build options, right? Yeah. And that's something ShopSaber is really proud of. We have options. It's going to cost you money. It will. Obviously, I'm, I'm putting more labor and time in. It's going to cost you money, but I have options. Can I build something in one day? No. no. I mean, let's be honest. That's no. just not realistic. You don't want something built in one day like that. Yeah, definitely not. You know, you don't want something that's sitting around waiting for you, that one emergency situation, right? Right. But that's something you have to think about is that like adding CNC equipment is planning for the future. It's the next season, right? Yep. You don't want to get caught off guard next year. No, you don't. So be ready. You know, nobody else is going to care about your work more than you, right? Get it done. Make your clients happy. I agree. So in the time, in the meantime, you already know how to make your product, right? You do. You should at least at this point, right? right. So you're either outsourcing it and you're depending on somebody else oh, or terrible. you're doing it yourself and it's just the old school way, right? It's too slow. Yeah. But you got to keep doing it that way in the meantime. You do. You can't solve that problem today. So you keep doing it that way, but put the wheels in motion to solve the problem. Don't find yourself in this position again. Yeah. You know, I, I just hate, like the worst thing is, is when I hear customers say like, I'm too busy to talk about the CNC machine. What? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. What? I'm trying to hand you the wheel for your bike, but you're going to push, you know, the bike without the wheel. Like that doesn't make sense. Like why wouldn't I just take two seconds? Yeah. It's going to take me two seconds out of my day. Right. It takes right. me. And let's just give real timelines here. It's obviously not two seconds. It's going to take you a couple hours, right? Yeah. To chat with us and go through everything and do, maybe do what you need to do to finalize the deal. For sure. So you give me a couple hours and I'm going to give you a lifetime of reward. It sounds like a pretty fair trade. Yeah. Like I'd say like take a few t- moments out of your time. And like, Jesse, I've heard you guys all say it. Like, do you want to take a call at 6 p.m.? Sure. Yeah. Like I'll take a call at 6 at night. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it at the end of the day. Like I don't care. Tell me when you can be available and we'll figure this out. Yeah. Let's put the wheels in motion. Absolutely. I've seen you guys work on the weekends, Saturdays, Sundays, to help customers who don't have the time during the week. Yep. All you got to do is let us know. Yep. Let them know. Hey, I'm really busy during the week. Can we chat Saturday? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Correct. I might, have a, I might have to dial it in. I might not be as available, but we can definitely talk. Yeah, I mean, weekend. well, that's what I always tell everybody. Like, we're Monday through Friday. That's our business hours. Right? Yeah. I'm not going to force an employee to work outside of those, those hours. I will never force somebody to work, right? Yeah. But they take enough pride in what they're doing that they're going to try to help out where they can. Yep. Like obviously the building's not open and we're not gonna have all the staff here, you know, that we normally have, but like from a sales standpoint to get the ball rolling, we can definitely help you out. And obviously we do have, you know, some guys that do work the weekends to keep the production thing moving, you know, like we do work outside of normal hours to keep ahead of our schedule. We, we do what's necessary. Yeah. And you know, and that's a big part of this. So like, again, it's not their problem. It's yours. It is. Your customer wants to spend their money, right? Yep. Or your vendor wants to solve your problem. You have to come up with the solution that works with them, you know, like, and that's where I say, like, this isn't just on the customer end. This isn't just on the vendor end. This is both. Both parties need to think about it this way. You know, how do you come overcome pressure? You how know? do you overcome pressure? You, you know, add people, change your process. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, I was just going to say, like, you know, you add people, you change processes, um, you know, processes, whether you're adding a new process, right? Yeah. You know, or you're changing something that's broken, right? You have people have these processes that I've done it for 10 years this way. Sometimes you have to go back and look at your process. Correct. Maybe there's a flaw in there. Well, 10 years ago, you weren't as busy as you are today. No, nobody was as busy as they are today. But you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, your process worked because you didn't have the workload. Right. The workload increased. Your process doesn't work anymore. Right. Like come up with a new process. Back like, to the drawing board. Yeah. Like you hear it from guys all the time. They're like, oh, I've been building cabinets this way for 20 years. Okay. Well, how many cabinets were you building 20 years ago compared to today? Probably a different quite, number. Yeah. Quite a few less, right? You know, so you add people, you, add, you know, you change processes, like you said. You know, one thing, technology. That's right. Add technology. Technology has really changed. Look at the last 10 years, like you said. Yeah. Where technology's come from, right? Machines, equipment, mm-hmm. software, right? Right. Look at software Just, just the stuff you can do with a phone. I can open my garage door with my phone now. I know. I like, it. seriously, think about that. Like, think about that. Like, where phones have come from. Remember when the flip phone was like... A big deal. It was huge. Like, think about that. Like, remember when the phones became small enough to put in your pocket? So, do you know Steve Jobs? Yeah. Like, they used to be huge. Yep. And now we're opening our garage doors. You used to have to wear cargo pants just so you could get your phone in your pocket? Right. You know, stop complaining. Nobody cares. Right. Like, I'm just going to be blunt. Like, nobody cares. They don't want to hear you complain. Like, we all got to work together. Everybody wants the same thing at the end of the day. Like, it's your problem, not theirs. So, let's work together. Let's come to a solution. Right. Like nobody cares like you do about your company. Nobody's ever going to care about your company as much as you do. We'll nobody. Sure, we'll sure try though. No, it doesn't matter. Like nobody right. cares about your business more than you. Right. They shouldn't. 
If somebody else cares more about your business than yourself, you're doing something wrong. Oh, absolutely. Like you should care more than anybody. So don't complain about it. Let's come up with a solution. Right. Use your resources, okay? Guys like Jesse, like Micah, Travis, Chad, all the guys in our you know, sales department are there to help you. They like, are. Like, that's literally what their job is, is to help you. That's, that's, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Like, you know, so, you know, stop comparing yourself to other people. That's one thing I always say is like, you're different. The way you do things is going to be different. That's fine. That's why people like us exist. Like, we want to know how do you do it? Why do you do it? What's your expectations? Like, we're going to be positive about it. Like, it's okay. We'll get through it. Like, we'll figure it out together. Right. Like, you know, have some compassion for each other. Like, shop super gets it. You're busy. We'll work around your schedule, man. We do it all the time. All the time. It's just a conversation. It's yeah. just people communicating. And I think that's the other thing is communication, right? People yeah. are afraid to communicate. Say, hey, this doesn't work for me. Let's do this. Let's do that. Just talk yeah. through it. And that's exactly right. You know, you, you have to really be nice to people. You know, that's why I said going back to the beginning, like I feel like everybody's unhappy this time of year, but like be nice to vendors, salespeople, customers, etc. Like everybody, be nice. Mm. Like just, you know, just think about this, okay? You're having a bad day. And the sales guy that's selling you your lumber, right? Yep. Ask you a question. And I see people, I see it all the time. Like guys just lash out, right? Yep. And it's like, dude, he or she's just doing her job. Right. Like, you don't have to like, react to that. Like, yep, like, it's okay. Take like, a step back, breathe. You know, like, you're, or your customer calling you, you know, give them your full time, fully. Like, invest in them. When they call you, they matter at that moment. Nobody else matters. Exactly. They matter. Like, pick the phone up. And be happy they called you. Oh, there's, and I guarantee you there's guys out there listening to us right now that have both spent over an hour with us on the phone, each one of us. I know yep. I've talked to customers for well over an hour, and I know yep. you have as well. Yep, and you get people that are really kind of cold to you. Like, yeah. they, they submit, you know, requests from our website, and they're like, just need a price. Yeah. And so you send them back, you know, hey, want to know more about this? Like, I need to know what I'm quoting. I can't just send you a price, right? right. I mean, the reality is, like, I just want to be like, well, our website has a price. Like, there's a price if you just need a price, right? But for million dollars <laughs> right Here's yeah price. exactly like you know but seriously like the website has a price right so there's your price but you reached out so that tells me that you probably need to know more right right so i'm gonna try to learn more about you too i want to know like what do you sense. do what are you cutting you know wh what is your budget like that's my favorite i ask people what their budget is and that you get these guys that just like lash out at you i'm not telling you my budget o okay like i don't know what you think like you're doing by not sharing your budget with me like it doesn't help either one of us no. like no. i can quote you anything you want like and I think it's the problem is, is people are still stuck in the mindset of like 20 years ago. Like I'm going to give him his bud my budget and then he's going to spend it all. Like, yeah, I might spend it all because you might need to spend it all. But <laughs> exactly. I may spend half of it because let's be honest, if your budget's 20,000 and I can do it for 10,000, it's an easier sale for me. When, exactly. Like I don't need to spend your 20 grand. Then it's a lot easier to sell you on something that's cost less. Right. We hammered that last week as well. Yeah. Like I win, we, you win, we both win in that Correct. deal. Like it's just, to me, that's just dumb when people that like won't help you out like that. Like just be honest with each other. Like if you can't afford something, say it to them. Right. Well, it just get, it gets me every time. Like you, you reached out to me. Yeah. I, I didn't call you. You reached out to me. I'm just following up. Yeah. Right? I just need to know a little bit more. Correct. Yeah. And that's exactly it. Like you got to be honest. Like if you can't afford something, let us know so we can like, or, you know, same thing. If your customer can't afford it, they need to let you know, because then I can tailor what I'm doing to fit your budget. It's not even just being able to afford it. Like, what if you don't have 220? And I, I don't know that, right? Yeah. I need to know what you have for power. I need to know what you have for kind of like space in your area to yep. make certain machines work for you. It's not just the budget. Yeah. There's a lot of other things we want to know. There's a lot of other things we need to know. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the one thing is, is like your customers, they come to you, right? Right. I need cabinets for my kitchen what does that mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like how many different style cabinets are there? I just need there's, cabinets. There's questions. Like the people need to, you know, be aware. There's going to be questions that you're going to ask. Like you don't have the time to waste building something that is out of their budget or out of their expectations. So like, it's better for us to communicate because I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to present you something and then you're going to be like, this took a week and it's not even close. Like, well, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. You know what kind of baffles me is, I think about this, when, when have you been in a situation where you're spending this kind of money or making this kind of investment where you haven't had to answer some questions? Correct. Right? Buying a car. Buying yep. a home. Yep. We sell machines that cost almost as much as a home at times, right? Yep. You have to answer some questions. You got to have a conversation. Yeah, that's true. How you is know? a CNC machine any different? Correct. No, that's, that's true. I mean, and when you think about it, like, just be clear. Tell them, you know, what you're expecting as a customer. Mm -hmm. Tell people what you're expecting. Right. Like everything you do, go into your life with that mentality of like, they don't know. They're not mind readers, right? Sales yeah. people are not mind readers. No, we're not. So if you go in to buy a new bed, you got to tell them what you're looking for, right? right? Why are you buying a new bed? Tell them what you're trying to accomplish. I want a bed. I want a bed. 
Do you, do you like soft? Do you like firm? I just want a bed. Give me a price. Give me a bed. Price. You know, like, it's not going to help I'm going to do that this week. I'm going to go to Mattress Firm. I'm going to try that. Don't do that. I'm going to. I want don't, a bed. Don't be that guy. Um, but yeah, you know, and then, you know, salespeople, ask questions. Right. Don't expect your customers to know what they're talking about. Exactly. Like, that drives me nuts. Customers go into, I see it all the time. Like, we go out shopping, you know, and then people are at, you know, like, they walk in, and, you know, as an example, they walk into the store and they're, they ask the sales associate, like, hey, I see these two TVs. And the guy's like, okay, which one do you want? Well, I don't, I don't know. What's the difference? Why is one $900 and one's $9,000? Like, yeah. what, what's the difference? Like, they both are going to show the TV, right? Yeah. Like, ask questions. They don't do your job. Mm-hmm. Your customers don't know what you do day in and day out like you do. Right. Take care of your customers. Dig ask deeper. questions. Yeah. Like, so as, as a vendor, you need to think about that. This isn't just a customer thing. Don't waste your customer's time. Right. Your customer has a lot going on. Like, ask them some questions so that way they can get through the process. Don't make it awkward for them. Yeah. You know? I've been on the other side of that. Yes. I don't like that. No, exactly. You know, and you have to understand that both of you have bad days, right? Right. Sales guy has bad days. Customer has bad days. Work together. It's that easy. It's okay to recognize that you're both having a bad day or somebody's having a bad day. Like, you know what? I get it. Like, I'm not trying to make, make this hard on you. Like, what can I do to make this easier? Right. Like, how can I help you out? You know, like, you just got to be compassionate. Like, I do that a lot. I mean, there's guys that can speak to you. Call a guy. Hey, how are you doing? Not good. What's going on? <laughs> let's get this out of the way. Why are you having a bad day? Not good. Let's let's crush that and let's have a good day now. Correct. Let's just deal with it. Yeah, you know, and you can tell. Like you can tell when people are having a bad day. Like their their personality isn't the same. Right. You know, they're they're cold. They shut the world down. You know, and like sometimes it's like take it out on the next guy. Yeah, the time, exactly. Right? You you just have to you you have to really know when is the time to dig in, right? You know, yeah. sometimes you just got to be compassionate for people. Right, and if I if I call you at the wrong moment, it's not a good time for you. All you gotta do is tell me, hey, can you call me back again later? Sure, yeah, absolutely. If if this call is gonna put stress on you right now, and you're gonna yell at me like a little kid, I'll call you later. Yeah, no problem. Like, I want to get yelled at. No, me. not at all. I want to get yelled at. That's not no. fun. Nobody likes getting yelled at. No, it's not fun. Like real reality is, like in business, we all just want we all want the same thing. We all want to be successful. We do. We need each other. We do. You know, you have to have each other. You have to, you know, really understand. What are you going to do to solve your problem? What are you going to do to solve your customer's problems? Right. Like, we have to work together to do that. And, you know, that's where I go back to it's not their problem. It's yours. Like, I have a business. Very true. I have a business. You know, we have a business to run here. What, what am I going to do to take care of the customer? I'm going to add people. I'm going to add building space. Right now we're expanding, right? We are. We're expanding right now because – Customers shouldn't have to keep waiting longer and longer and longer, right? We're getting busier. We are. So the, the <clears throat> interim answer is I'm going to keep telling people, like, okay, the lead times are what they are, you know, right? Right. 10 to 12 weeks right now or right. whatever we're at, you know? It's, you're going to start telling people, like, I'm going to be honest with you. This is where we're at. But I don't want it to be like that forever. No. You're working on a solution, right? Yeah. So I come up with a solution. Like, I'm going to add, you know, more space so I can add more equipment so then I can add more people which means I can build more machines. You take care of your customer better. Exactly. You know, and that's really, I think, what's huge about, you know, this time of year is that it's like this funnel, right? January is the funnel. I always say January is the start of your funnel. Yep. And the funnel keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller all the way down to December. But everything you did in January all the way through December starts funneling through. And when you get to December, you're doing so much more in a smaller, you know, space. Yeah. Because really everything's moving through at the, you know at, at this rate that you've built. Is you when know, people start to panic. Yeah, well, I mean it's just taxes, right? Yep. You're in taxes. Guys are thinking like I gotta start you know I gotta start spending some money, or guys are thinking like man we're so busy that I can't do this again next year. I need to be in a better spot next year. For sure. So they start adding equipment, you know, and that's where this time of year goes crazy for people, and like for us, you gotta you know for us we gotta think about like how do we build more machines, but for you the consumers you gotta think about how do you build your product faster. Right. How do you say yes to more customers, right? Right. By being that, able to produce more faster. Yeah. I mean, that, that is kind of your, your end goal here, right? That's why to you're say in yes, business. Right? I mean, that's the goal for everybody is to say yes. Be a yes man. Right. Be able to say yes to everything. You don't open a business to say no. Nope. Not, not, not interested. Nah, I don't want your money today. Nope. I'm good. Got enough of that. Yep. Bank's full. Bank's full. <laughs> Nobody's ever said No that. more room for shoeboxes under my bed. I'm sorry, what? That's um, not where you keep your money? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going with. Yeah. Um, there's four weeks left in the year. That's it? Four weeks. Wow. What are you going to do in the next four weeks to better your 2022? That's a good question. 
something everybody should be thinking about right now. Like, what am I going to do over the next four weeks to make sure 2022 is a better year? Ask yourself that. What am I going to do to make sure I have a better 2022? Yep. I do it every year. I reflect December 1st every year. And I say to myself, what am I going to do? Why am I working so hard in December for 2022? I come up with a plan every year. You have to. That's what keeps people driven. Yep. It keeps people motivated to have a plan. And you have to remember that. You know what? It's a season. It's a season. You're going to be busy. Yep. It's, it's what happens. Anyone can do anything for a yep. short period of time. Correct. In Minnesota, we have four seasons. We do. Sometimes we experience them all in one day. Sometimes in Minnesota, we only have two. <laughs> Sometimes we only have two. Winter and what seems like spring. Winter and road construction. <laughs> right. Is that not the two seasons? I, I think you nailed it. Did I get it wrong? Yeah, no. It, okay, nailed cool. it. Yeah. I, I think road construction in Minnesota is always a season here. It seems like it. Like it, it used to stop like in the fall. Remember? Like, oh, we don't need to work in the winter on road construction. Now they're like, don't worry. We got the machines to work through the winter too. We'll Perfect. inconvenience you there as well. Don't worry about the two feet of snow. There's road construction yep. going on as road well. Road construction. Like, what the heck? Uh, but no, seriously, though, it's four weeks left. You got to push hard. You know, you got to take care of your customers. You do. You need to buy a CNC machine is what you need to do. I agree with you. I just, I mean, I might be biased here. Maybe a little bit. But you should buy a CNC machine. It, it makes sense. Got a bakery? Buy a CNC machine. I, I've done it. You've done it for a bakery? Yeah. Can you make donuts on a CNC machine? I can make plywood donuts. They taste like plywood. Probably wouldn't taste as good. A uh, bakery company that uses conveyor belts, they cut their plastic conveyor belts and stuff on the machine. Boom. Boom. CNC's not right for me. If the donut shop needs one. There's a good chance you do, too. I mean, it really, CNC does work in a lot of industries. Like, a lot of people don't realize that CNC has a direct effect on most industries. It does. You know, whether direct in your job, maybe not, right? Maybe the person listening right now, they're like, I don't ever need a CNC machine. Why are you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused there. Uh, no, and seriously. Well, don't, don't shut it off. Don't, don't shut it off. Wait, Keep I'm listening. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> I'm kidding. The... Uh, <laughs> No, but, you know, in all seriousness, like, some of you people listening might say, you know, yeah, I'm never going to need to buy a CNC machine. You're right. You might not need to, but your job may rely on CNC machines. At some point in time. You know, like, I've, I've got people I've talked to. I have a buddy of mine, right? He runs a retail store. He flat out told me, he's like, I would never have to buy a CNC machine. Like, who do you think makes your shelving? <laughs> who do you think makes your display cases? <laughs> the look on your face and he's priceless. like, <laughs> He just stared at me, and he's like, you make a good point there. I'm like, yeah, you buy those products from a company, right? Right. He's like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, that company uses a CNC machine, guaranteed. This is something I've been talking about a lot lately it's with my customers, like the situation in this country, right? It's not getting any better. Goods are running out. Like you're seeing more and more people add equipment, more and more people making things themselves. It's yeah. popular. Like it's, you're seeing that. Yeah. And you know what? I think things, while they appear they're not getting better, you know, they, they're getting better. I mean, the reality is, is like, Things that are getting better is the fact that now that you control more, people aren't dependent on other people as much. Right. Well, that aspect's getting better for sure. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of those things where, like, adding a CNC machine gives you freedom. Oh, a ton of it. Like, let's be honest, okay? We've seen it. Have we not here, Jesse? Our competition just alone, right? We yep. got competitors that are quoting machines out till mid-2022. Yeah, it's very true. Like, you can't ship me a machine till July of next year? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to ship you a machine in February. Right. <laughs> like, and I'm selling more machines than I know of any other company out there right now. That's, like, that's it's because fact. we control the market more. Like, we don't rely on other people. Right. We, we build it in-house. That's kind of what I was hitting on there when I was getting to that. Like, be in control. Yeah. Make sure that you're the one in control. Yeah. Like, they're not getting better when you depend on other people. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that is true. But, like, the supply chain world, it's, it's weird. It is. Like, some things... You just don't get right now. But some things are like, yeah, no problem. We can get them right now. You know, like right. it, it kind of depends what you shop for. I mean, material, that's a perfect example. Like in the summer, material is a lot harder to come by, right? Very true. It seems to be getting a little better there. Yeah, we a little seem better. to be getting our hands on material a little easier now. Um, you had to work a little harder, right? Right. Got to do some stuff now that maybe you didn't have to do before. You have to shop multiple vendors. Make more phone calls. Yeah. I mean, before you used to just, I'm going to call Bob up and Bob's going to send me over, you know, the material I need. Right. Well, Bob might not be able to get it now. So now you got to call Bob and Randy, right? Right. You got to figure it out. You know, you get there. You got to have multiple resources to get things. Um, but again, it's not their problem. It's yours. It's yours, right? You need the material. 
they're going to try to help you where they can, but it's not their problem that they can't get the material either. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like they, they like being out of material. It just seems like we shift the blame, like, as people, right? Mm -hmm. We just shift it. Like, okay. oh, it's, it can't get the material. It's, it's his fault. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Like, it's no one's fault. It's nobody's fault. We're all on the same thing. We man. have to work together. We've got to work together on this thing. Like, and I tell people that all the time. Like, we'll build you a machine. And if we're missing something... I'm going to let you know right away. Like, I'm working on it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find right. the resolution here. I'm going to come to a, a conclusion that's going to work for us all. But just give me a little bit of time. I don't have an answer today. You know, and I'll be transparent. And that's what I always say. Be transparent with people. Be honest with people. There's nothing wrong with honesty. I, I need some like, time. This is what my expectations are. Tell me your expectations or tell them your expectations. Right? Tell your customer, like, my expectations here is to have this done in this amount of time. It's an estimate. I promise you, I will do everything I can to meet that deadline, but it's not a guarantee, right? Right. Or if it is a guarantee, then tell them it's a guarantee. Like, I'm going to have it done by this date. I know I am going to. It's just communication. Yeah. Right? Like, just talking about it, working together. Yep. Got to be clear. Very clear. It's important. Yeah. And, you know, I always tell everybody that, like, we try to be as open-ended as we can. Like, call us. If you got questions on something, call us. I think we're pretty, pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Well, I don't think there's any benefit to us to not be straightforward, right. you know? Like, for us, we're not here to sell, sell mass quantity of machines that we can't deliver, you know? Exactly. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm not going to tell you two weeks if it's going to take me six weeks. There's no benefit to that. It, it doesn't solve a problem for either one of us. It just creates more headache because in two weeks, you need your machine, and in two weeks, I'm still four weeks from being completed. Right. That I, I know it's not the greatest when you hear, oh, we're 12 weeks, right? But I would rather give you that lead time instead of kicking the can down the road on you. Yeah. You know, instead of telling you six weeks, oh, I didn't get a part. Let's kick the can yeah, a little exactly. bit. Yeah, exactly. Like, and there's the companies that do that, unfortunately. There's companies doing it right now. Yeah, we've 100%. seen it. Yeah, we've seen it. We're co companies are literally telling people something that's not true and then kicking the can down the street. You know? Yep. Like, and how many calls have we gotten? Oh they told God. me five weeks. They told me six weeks. I'm on 90 days right now, and I haven't yep. seen my machine. Yep. We don't want to do that to you. Yeah, I don't do that to people. We refuse to do that to no, you. No, that doesn't mean every model is 12 weeks. I mean, we have some models that Just are shipping out the door. Just using that as an Yeah, exactly. I mean, we got some models that are shipping out the door in four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I got a call the other day from a guy. He's like, well, I thought you guys were at 12 weeks on something. I'm like, well, you know, certain models are. But he goes, yeah, I uh, paid my deposit, and uh, that was two weeks ago, and you guys are calling me let me know the machine's done. Yeah. I'm like, need a little more time? He's like, I do. I'm like, no problem. We'll work <laughs> no together. No problem. Like, we'll work together. Yeah. I'm like, don't worry. So, yeah, I mean, we're fortunate enough that we've been able to build machines. Like I said, we have a lot of people back there right now. We're hustling. It's busy. Our guys are hustling. They're working. The guys and gals are hustling. Very true. I want to ask one question, okay? Yeah. How many companies do you know where the accounting team is on the floor helping out? Mm, I can't really think of one, to be honest. It's pretty awesome. But here, yesterday, we had people from the accounting department helping with the inventory. That's just the way we do things around here. Everybody helps each other out. I, I can speak that to Garrett. There's a lot of things that Garrett does for Garrett's us. That, what, social media guy does that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right, that's the thing. Is like He's got this title that's a social media expert, right? Like, what a... What a dumb title. It should be Swiss Army Knife. Can we change that? Yeah, we should change that. Swiss Army Knife. Swiss Army Knife. Shop Saber Swiss Army. And his hair's red. <laughs> that wasn't right? necessary, was it? Well, just like a Swiss Army Knife. They're red. You know? You ever seen one? I have a black one. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have a black one at home. <laughs> Touche. Uh, it's funny. Uh, but no, seriously, Garrett, you're not, you're not kidding. We should change your title because, I mean, the guy helps with everything, right? He right. does social media. He does marketing for us. Like, he helps with the videos. Me and him work on videos all the time together. Yep. He works with our promotional stuff. Like, he helps me do the flyers and, you know, some of that stuff. He helps sales. Yeah. He helps those guys with emails. You know, he'll, he'll you know, help people. He loves answering the phone. He answers the phone. That's true. I forgot about yeah. that. He's like. This morning, it's not even 730. It's ringing and Garrett's on the phone. Like, dude, we don't open until 8, man. <laughs> like, do that was on me. Garrett's, he was so excited. But that's the thing is like, he's so quick to jump in. Right. But that's what we have as a company. Woo! It goes back to, it's not their problem, it's yours. Like, we have to come up with a solution. So we cross train everybody. Yeah. Because Garrett even, like Garrett, you know it, right? I mean, it's, it's not their problem that we're busy, right? So you jump in. Exactly. You've said it multiple times. You're like, I'll jump on the phones. Like, yeah, somebody's out today. It's not the customer's fault that one of our employees is gone. Like, I'll, I'll handle the phones today. It's awesome. Like, he jumps on there. You know, like, it's, it's great because we have people that are willing to do that. And as soon as you develop that culture and that mindset, it changes your entire, like, look on everything. Like, it does. Everything here is it's positive all the yep. time, right? There's always good, positive energy. Yep. We try to, you know, block out that toxic energy. It's mm -hmm. just not worth it. Like, it's not worth toxic energy. 
Toxic energy can wreck oh, an entire day, week, month, year. Oh, I'm sure people have heard it where we pick up the phone and everyone in the background is just laughing. Yeah. There's been many times. Yeah, we've uh, we've had many comments from people. They're like, is it a party going on back yeah. there? Like, yeah, kind of. Sorry. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, we're having a good time right now. You know, we love but, our job. Yeah, we do. We really enjoy what we do. And I hope you guys do too. I mean, when you're listening to this, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, like, find out what it is about your job you don't like. Right. Like, that's what you need to figure out. Because most people, it's not the job. It's, it's something, something within the it. job, right? You know, yeah. it's we're too busy and I can't get it done right. Buy a piece of equipment. Right. Do something. Yeah, it's going to cost you a little money. Maybe we can fix something to make your job more enjoyable. Yeah. It's, you know, it's an upfront inv- investment. You're going to invest in something now, but I promise you on the back end, if, if that is where your burden is, it's going to solve a problem for you, and that's going to make things more enjoyable. Yep. Things are always changing. They will continue to change, but if you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. It's kind of what, what it comes down to at the end of the day. It is. Yeah, that's exactly it. You're, you're 100% right. Like, people find time for the things they want. Right? True. Like, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to find time. No, you're not. Like, you're going to find excuses. excuses. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Like, you know, and you yeah, don't twinsies want... Twinsies hooking up there on that Twinsies. One. Twinsies. <laughs> Speaking of twinsies, there was two pies at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Identical pies. Yeah. They did not taste identical. No, they didn't? No. What was the difference? Both apple pies. My sister-in-law made it. And she said, try both these apple pies. I'm like, apple pie, I'm on it. One apple pie was much better than the other apple pie. Did one have a whole grain crust? No, they did not have a whole grain crust. Was one the gluten-free? No. It was just the way she made the pie. And she knew it. And she's like, I just want to get your opinion of them. And the one, I was like, <laughs> yep, nope, not that one. They're trying to lick your foot to get yep. the taste and out. And then I got the other pie, and I was like, I'm going to eat that whole pie. Here we so go. Did she, oh, pie. What was different? I don't know. I didn't cook it. She did. You didn't ask? No. I just ate the one that I liked. So what, is so, he leaving you hanging here, too? So that's it? That's all I know. I want to know why the pie was different. That, it yeah. just tasted much worse. Are you confused here? Yeah. I'm confused Perfect. Here. I ate two different things. I, I want to know why the, the pie was different. I'm going to ask, well, why does this one taste different? I was hoping she maybe put something in your pie, like get well, back at you for something. Still alive. Because she obviously like, knew something was different. If she asked you, try both. Yeah. I mean, Probably. I was hoping she was getting you. I'd like her. <laughs> but it was funny because the reason I asked that, I say, bring this all up. Two pies, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be both apple pies that she made. Yeah. And it was like divided down the family. Half the family liked the one pie, half of them liked the other pie. True story. Both pies ended up empty. But I did not like the one pie and I liked the other pie. Weird. It was weird. It but is my weird. point is, is like, it's just a matter of, you know, the way you look at things. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's two pies identical and both had different outcomes, right? Yeah. It's just like your business. It's two businesses side by side, right? You end up with two cabinet shops or two sign shops. You're going to do things differently. You are. Do what's right for your company. Don't try to mimic somebody else. You got to look at your business and take care of your business and the energy you're putting off. That that is the difference in results. Some companies are not as successful because of the way people are. That's very true. If you have the right attitude and you go into it, like find what works for you. Just because that other pie, right? That other pie doesn't taste right. That's not right for you. Do what's right for your company, right? I like that. Got there. That was awesome. So, yeah, twinsies. 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 But like I, I said, had the same similar situation, I guess, right? We went up north. There were two different places that served pie. So I stopped at one. I had two pieces of pie at that one. I was like, eh, this wasn't the greatest. Let's go to the next place. We went to that next place and had more pie. Was one of the pie places you went to Grandma's? No. It was Betty's Pies, which is supposed to be world famous. Oh. And there was a restaurant down the street that had pie as well. I thought it was called Grandma's. Grandma's is in Duluth as well. Yeah, they have pie. But do they do? Yeah. Okay. I knew I wasn't losing my mind then. Yeah. I was like, I thought Grandma's had pie. Did you didn't have Grandma's pie though? No, I didn't have any of Grandma's pie. Although I did see some pretty cool pictures. Did you end up going swimming in Lake Superior? No, I did not. I really wanted to. What? I was gonna go Saturday morning, right? I that get this text the text message. Back up here. So yeah. Jesse sends me a text message the night before, and he's like, he, "It's a picture of what looks like death." I mean, it's just this. It turning, was. <laughs> it's this turning lake. Like, it's just... It's Lake Superior, yeah. Yeah, it's Lake Superior, like... Waves. November, <laughs> Lake Superior, okay? Yeah. It's, it looks cold. I guarantee it's cold. It looks like the song Edmund Fitzgerald. It just <laughs> it looks, looks like, like it. you shouldn't be like in there. Like there's a ship sinking? Yeah, like you should not be in the water right now. And he goes, going swimming tomorrow morning? Yep. And I wrote back, 
Sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah. And he said, nope. Gonna wake up first thing in the morning, go and swim in. Yeah, I think someone agreed with you. We uh, we woke up late. We had plans in the morning, so we were rushed to get out of the hotel to get to where we had to be. Oh. And the whole day, I kept looking for opportunities, and she's like, "You're going swimming. You're going swimming." I'm like, "Stop making me so busy all day, and I'll go swimming." Right? Never got a chance. Sunday, I almost did. Right? Walked down the beach and I almost jumped in the Superior. Oh, I'm kind of glad you didn't. You're probably I, better off. They invited it. me up for the polar plunge, though. That's cool. Yeah. I might, I I might actually doing, do it. Yeah, I thought about doing the polar plunge again. I did it uh, a few years ago, and it's one of the best things you'll ever do. You know, there's people listening just right now that have no idea what that is. Like, so, yeah, that's a good point. A polar plunge, that's a good point. Uh, polar plunge is, um, in Minnesota here, it gets cold. Really cold. And the water freezes. Sure does. So we call it hard water fishing. Is hard water it. fishing. Yeah. So basically, it creates ice on the lakes. And yes, we go out on the lake. So we walk out there, we drive out there, whatever it is. Well, the polar plunge is put on for Special Olympics is what it is. Yeah. And they cut these giant holes in the, in the lake. Yeah, they right? do. They, they cut the ice, like a big block out of it. Yeah. And the fire department's there. They have people there for safety reasons. But they literally, you, you raise money for Special Olympics, and then you jump in the, in the lake. Yep. It, and it's, I mean, it's freezing cold. Beyond cold. Like, yeah, it's. It's frozen lake water, yeah. right? Cold. And like to put it this way, they cut this hole in the wa- in the ice, and by the next day, that hole usually has a crust of ice back over the top of it. Oh yeah, you can almost walk on it again yeah. for sure. So it's it's that cold water, and yeah, I mean they do it January, February, you know March time frames typically. Absolute coldest yep, time you like can do they it. They do it when it's cold. Yep. And uh, yeah, I did it. I mean I went out there. I, I raised money for it um, a few years back, and yeah, it was. It was worth every minute of it. I will say that. Like, it is truly an experience. If you've never done it, it completely releases your body. Like, you are just, like, in that moment, completely stress-free. Oh, it's like, 100%. you can't be stressed. Like, it's just like... You can't think. Yeah, you don't. You, don't you can't th- breathe. I've seen grown men dunking women to get themselves out of the water. My feet didn't touch. When like, I jumped off of that ice yep. block into the water, I, I, my feet didn't touch the ground. Yep. I, was, I was walking on water. Yeah, right? I've seen it. I'm telling you, like, people... So cold. We were in line, and I watched it. We, I mean, the people in front of us, they ju- and a lot of times it's fun. Like, people dress up. They do, like, costumes. They do, like... You know, dressed as things. a hot dog. Is that what you did? Yep. Yeah, we, uh, we went as a toga party, is what we did. All of us, my group, went as a toga party. Is, uh, Togas are a bad idea when you jump in a frozen lake. That's what I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. right? The idea is a cool costume. You know how much colder that is and how hard it is to get that off? Yeah, you know how hard it is to get through the water when you got a parachute behind you? Yeah. It's the worst thing ever. You're like, I'm immediately regretting yeah. this decision, right? We should so, we should do it as a team after December's done. We should. I, w- I would do it. But it's... Absolute blast. But like I said, I watched these people right in front of me. They jump in, and the, it's a guy and a gal. And they get in, and the gal is ahead of him, right? Ahead of him trying to get to the stairs yeah. to get out. And he grabbed her and, like, used her as leverage so he could get to the stairs. Like, I watched him do it. And I'm like, there's no rules when it comes to four plunge, <laughs> man. Today, Sorry. Not, nope, today. not today. He was like, I'm getting out of the water at all costs. I can see that. But it was, I would pull Brie off that ladder yeah, to get that's out That's what I'm before. saying. And so you get, you get off, you know, you get off the, the ladder, and you, you're – kind of now in a mad dash because they typically have hot tubs yeah they usually have hot tubs off you know shore so now you're in a mad dash to get to the hot tubs or the changing room one of the two yeah and because remember now you've been in the water and you get out and we're still in minnesota so it's like seven degrees outside a lot of times yeah if you're lucky and uh (laughs) yeah so you're mad dashing for these you know for these uh hot tubs and all i hear is the woman yelling at the husband the whole entire way to to this to this thing she's yelling at him why did you push me under? And I'm thinking to myself, because it's cold. That's why he pushed you under. I want out. Like, I'm just being honest with you. You should have gotten a better lead. You gave him the opportunity. <laughs> Get out in front. So, yeah, no, like I said, that was, that's pretty cool if you're going to go do that polar plunge. I completely derailed our conversation here. but You did, but it's all right. It's yeah, all right. I'll, I will get up there and get in that lake yet. That's, yeah. I, yeah, when you sent me that picture, though, I was thinking to myself, like, nope, not going to do that today. I really wanted to, too. She said I could get a new gun if I did it. Oh, there you go. Right. It's a win-win. Yeah. So I lost. <laughs> Brianna was trying to get you in the water, huh? No, I think she realized, like, damn, he's really going to do it. <laughs> I better yeah. make his day busy. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. She's like, oh, we got to figure out how to make this not happen. But you know what? It's the end of the year. It is. You got four weeks left to get stuff done. Four weeks. Be kind. Work together. Let's get that mindset positive out there. 
Four weeks is all we got left, right? That's it. Four weeks. Season's over. Four weeks, right, Garrett? Four weeks. Where do they go to find out more about this stuff? Shopsaver.com. Shop there we go. Shopsaver.com. Make it so, happen. Make it happen. Let's, uh, let's stop making excuses. Start finding solutions. Let's work together. I'm Brandon. I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop with Shopsaver.